So day one of FIFA has officially come here and loads has been going down. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about what's been going on with the market and everything that's been happening in the last 24 hours. Before we do start the video, if you guys are interested, I do have my subscriber trading guide, but it's actually free all the way 1st to October. I put all my investments that we made last night, if we've made some good, good money on. Loads of, again, stuff has already come through, and all the data to help you guys with trading is on it. And again, there's no gimmick whatsoever. It's literally just a Google Docs link, top link in the description. Uh, as I say, free to the 1st of October, so make yourself familiar with it, because you can make yourself some decent coins. So... Let's go and talk about what's been going on in the last 24 hours because it has been hectic, but it's been the exact same as last year. So even though it's been hectic, we've been able to prep, prepare for just you know, the hecticness. So as always, let's go and start off with talking about what SPCs came out because there's quite a lot of movements and quite a lot of, um, yeah, quite a lot of stuff happened in, uh, with the SPCs. So the SPCs that when it came out was a generic SPC called Total Rush. Now, Total Rush, again, it wasn't anything too crazy. Um, what it required was two golds, uh, five rares, 70 rating. Now what rose for this? Uh, because it needed lots of rares and there were three center mids, it rose center mids from top five uh, nations. So Spanish rare center mids, bronze rare center mids, um, I think like probably Italian and French bronze rare center mids did really, really well. So that's where that rose. It didn't really drop anything. It just rose a few individual rare positions. Uh, we then went and got ourselves this uh, Angelea Sosa. Now sadly, the card is an amazing. Now she only comes in at 22k, so you know you're not losing an arm and a leg for it. In fact, once you get your three tradable packs pack, it probably is only costing you about 10k. So really, it's like a a no loss other than her card looks quite abysmal. She's got no additional playstyle pluses. She's got no additional player roles. Four cell skills, five foot five, 80 pace. Again, you just, it's a hard sell. I, I, to be honest, if you can't you can't convince me, I want to get this card in my team. Now, if you guys don't know, there have been changes to um, how the foundations work. They do get plus two league links but the thing is you know if you're using the actual decent La Liga F players it's hard to believe that you'd be using uh, using Sosa but there you go there's her card there are in-game stats and uh, there's her play stars if you want to pause anywhere on that but those were the uh, two meh SBCs but there was one really really good SBC which we knew was coming which was marquee matchups. Now we knew, well, we predicted marquee matchups coming because it came this time last year and it comes every Thursday. And there was quite a lot of market movements from these. So let's go through a few of the market movements. Didn't see anything happen with the Fenerbahce Galatasaray. Um, the <laughs> Lombardia versus Milano, otherwise known as Inter versus AC Milan. Didn't see much happen here. The majority of movements was weirdly enough with this one. Now the majority of movements is normally the uh, most expensive one or the highest rated one, but it was actually with this one. And that's because in this one, they had the requirement minimum quality silver, clubs maximum four. And these are really awkward ones because, of course, you can only use four clubs. And as a result of only being able to use four clubs, um, you know, there's kind of a lot of people using the same sort of players. On top of that, they also wanted you to, for one of those two, four clubs, to be Villarreal or Barcelona, and minimum two being uh, Spain. Basically, they wanted you to build a full Spanish team. Well, because there's minimum quality silver, what I thought, or what normally happens here, is people will go out there and buy silvers over golds. Even though golds might be 400 coins, they'll generally go and buy silvers for 700 coins, because when they're told minimum quality, they just presume silvers is going to be the cheapest. So what I went and did was I went and bought myself, and again, I told my Twitch chat this, that silvers from the La Liga would have done well because of this, and they did. They all went from about 300 coins to seven uh, to 700 coins. So again, do make sure to join the streams at 6pm so you don't miss out on stuff like that. On top of that, we also did loads and lo well, we recommended lots of free investments for this one. This is the most predictable one. Um, now, one of the best investments that we threw on the guide was for 200 or 250 coins, you could have got yourself these uh, Man City bronzes. Now, don't get me wrong, they're not actually 5k, but these cards went up to around about 1.2k um, from 200 coins. So six times the profit. I went and bought a few of them, actually sold them in the pre-hype. But yeah, really, really good money there. Arsenal players did okay. Um, other than that, I did go and buy a bunch of cams because it was in the formation of 4 triple two, which needs two cams. And I already knew, well, whatever SBCs need cams, I know cams are rare because of the first generic SBC. Uh, but that's about it. So I did okay of it. I said, made good money on the Spanish silver players. Villarreal players also temporarily went up to 1.5k. Now, what this did was this, um, this really dropped the market. Now, uh, we're now going to talk about the market because, again, this, uh, this is probably the biggest thing that happened. Now, there was uh, multiple market moves, so let's go and walk through them. Now, the nice thing is, is these market moves kind of happened on every single player, and it's the same as last year. So, even though there were quite a lot of movements in, I'd say, about 24 hours, it all happened last year, and it was all very predictable. So, the first rise that occurred was that the market rose when the New Zealand edition came out. So, the New Zealand edition came out at 1pm, uh, and we can see that because we can see a rise here on Van der Ven. 
Again, I can go and I've got multiple examples all have following the same trend. So the reason the market rose between uh, before the New Zealand edition and after the New Zealand edition is, in theory, there wasn't much demand to go out and buy a team. And as a result, not demand there not being much demand to go out and buy a team, no one was buying the meta players. On top of that, up until this point, no one was able to load up FIFA points. And because no one was able to load up FIFA points, in theory, you couldn't have unlimited coins. If you can load up FIFA points, in theory, you can have unlimited coins. If you can't load up FIFA points, obviously, you can only have the coins you've been given or to work with or to trade with. So what happened is people went from having, let's say, 10 or 10, 20K, they then got the 4.6K FIFA points, well, the New Zealand people did, or if they load up FIFA points, they you know, can take themselves from about 10k to 200-300k, and then they start buying players. So Van der Ven proceeded to go from 17k all the way up here to 48k. They peaked here at 6pm because, again, this was the peak of people playing the game, buying stuff, but cars not being resupplied. Cars then got resupplied on marquee matchups, and again, the only people who could have played the game up until here were people who were on Xbox doing the New Zealand glitch, or just people in New Zealand and Australia in general, but of course, uh, I guess Oceana is quite a, uh, quite a minority when it comes to the demographic. I think there is only about 2,000 cards on the market, whereas actually, if I go and compare it to the market now, bear in mind it is 7 o'clock in the morning, which the market is still going to be quite quiet. I mean, in all fairness, there is only 2,800 right now, but I'd imagine that will go and pick up to about four, 5,000 as the game, game terms uh, you know, picks up. So the market peaks at 6 p.m. Then, of course, those marquee matchups, they give you five tradable packs. He dropped and dropped and dropped and dropped down to 11 p.m. Now, the re relevance of 11 p.m. is 11 p.m. is when uh, Europe gets the game. I think it's more Eastern Europe, if I'm not wrong. Um, and because of that, now we've got a massive surge of players. Just like we had a surge of players here, we had a surge of players here. Now my recommendations for people was go and buy whatever players had the biggest rise here because whatever players had the biggest rise here show that when there's an increasing amount of coins people have, these are the players that are increasing demand. So for example, we had Van der Ven, he did very, very well. Um, I mean, other players, uh, which I didn't invest in, I guess. I'll, I'll show you the ones I invested down the line. Uh, other players were recommended to go and buy was, what's it called, Adi Yemi. Adi Yemi did exceptionally well, if I'm not wrong. There he is, Inform Adiyemi. Again, we are using FootGG for prices. So Adiyemi did 31k up to 66k. He then did 44k up to 75k. We'll see at the moment. Back down to 60k. But you can see that players who did really well in the first rise did very, very nicely on the, uh, the second rise. So, there we go. Again, the same thing happened last year, so it's not really too much of a surprise whatsoever. And again, across the board, this occurred. So, even with cheap cars like LaCroix, this is people loading up with the New Zealand. This is him being resupplied with marquee matchups. This is Europe jumping on the game. We're now going to head to the next card, Griezmann. Same thing. New Zealand getting the game. Marky matchup supply. Europe getting the game. Interesting enough, his uh, secondary rebound wasn't anywhere near as good. Uh, and I think, yeah, that kind of wraps that up there regarding the market. So, what's going to go and happen with the market now? Now, there's kind of like two things that will... There's two ways of like looking at the market and caring about the market. Um, one... You can't really be asked with the whole trading malarkey. You just want to buy your team. You want to play a bit for as long as possible before it drops. Now, if that is your, uh, if that is you, you basically want to go and, well, if you haven't already, you want to go and buy your cards now. You aren't really too late because, you know, uh, what can I go and show you that shows you you're not too late? I can go and load up. There you go, Tonali, right? So this was like this morning. This is now. And even now, his Tonali would have been about 75k, right? The equivalent of last year. Well, even though, yes, you didn't go and buy him at 60k, you're buying him 10k more. If I show you what happened to Tonali between, um, between that day and the release, he went from 80k all the way up there to 130. So yeah, you didn't go and get him at 62, the absolute low. But there's still reason to go and buy cards now because cards now are still pretty low. Because what you can understand is within the next week, we're going to have division rival rewards, we're going to have squad battle rewards, people are going to load up FIFA points, people are going to be playing games, and everyone's going to get more and more and more coins. And because they're all going to get more and more coins, they're going to have more coins to buy the top like 20, 30, well, top 50 most demanded players. And these players are going to rise and rise and rise. So even though, yes, if you didn't go and buy at um, 11, you didn't go and buy at midnight, you didn't get the cheapest prices, but they're still very cheap in compared to what they should be later in the week. Uh, there shouldn't be any sort of uh, drastic variables that should mean that this year isn't going to go and follow last year's trend. Now, one thing I will say is, so the normal trend is that the cards will rise all the way through to the standard edition. Uh, so you kind of sell them one day before the standard edition. Last year, they did stagnate a few days before that. Um, but again, we can see this. We can kind of see before the market drops. So again, this is what happened with Walker last year. This was the um, Ultimate Edition. 
Here was the standard edition, normally again they'd rise all the way there to the standard edition, but they did peak a few days early, but because, they were, because they're the same price for two days in a row, we could have anticipated a drop, because it isn't normal that they would have been the same price two days in a row. So now it's going to pull you meta cards, they're just basically going to rise day, 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 day after day, all the way until again the, uh, the 26th, so six days of rising. But if they do stagnate for one one day, when I say stagnate, it doesn't mean like one hour. It doesn't mean they're not rising for one hour. It means they're not rising for 24 hours in compared to the price they were the previous 24 hours. That can be an indication that the market's not going to keep rising. And because it can be an indication that the market's not going to keep rising, I would recommend selling. Uh, now, if this occurs in the next 24 hours, I, I don't know, I probably want to gamble against it. It's more if this occurs in like three or four days time, you know, where, where there isn't that many more days for the market to rise. Um, and by then you should have made some good, good money. Now that's kind of like how to play the long game, but there is actually ways of playing the short game. So thank you very much to one of my viewers. He actually sent me a bunch of the hour to hour graphs of last year. So for example, if you want to go and play the hour to hour game, a lot of the market seems to go and peak today around about midday. So it'd be about four hours probably from when you're watching this video. We can see it peaks here. So this, for example, is Tonali, and it would have peaked at 90K and then went down to 73K at content. Another player right here is Dembele. Peaked here at 225k, went down here to 200k at content. Um, now, sadly, uh, this is Walker, but Walker isn't the best example because we had the Kevin De Bruyne, uh, and he went for, well, again, he peaked up here at 85, then went down there to 74, and then obviously rebounded after that. And I think, is that what she wrote? And then obviously we've got, who's this? Colo Muni Iron. Again, Peter here at 37, dropped down there to 32k after content. Regarding buying the players, I'd look at buying the players probably anywhere from about midnight through to 6, 7 a.m. So either if you're you know, up late, then look at buying it around midnight. If you're up early, look at buying it around about 7 a.m. The reason these are the best hours is because these are the very inactive hours in Europe. And because they're the very inactive hours in during, for Europe, uh, there's not many people playing. But about 8, 9 in the morning, all the way through to about 9, 10 p.m., the market's very active and, as a result, normally very expensive. So every single day, what you can kind of do is buy early in the morning then sell sometime before 6 p.m. content, then go and buy back very early in the morning. And you can kind of do this trend every single day because even though the market rises more every 24 hours, within those 24 hours, there's sort of buy and sell points. But again, this is quite finicky. It's, you know, it's, it's very trader. It's, it's you know, very reading the market rather than just, you know, let me just buy stuff and hold on to it and chill. So that covers uh, the market. Let's see what other stuff we've got to uh, go and talk about. Again, sometimes what happens is the market doesn't drop in the evening and normally the market doesn't drop in the evening if um, if the content at 6 p.m. isn't very good. But uh, as I say, we do anticipate there being good content or at least expect there being uh, pro impacts every day. Um, I'll also explain, I guess, what's probably just happened in the last few hours. Also, what happened in the last few hours is the market should have peaked a few hours ago and dropped. The reason the market would have peaked a few hours ago and dropped, so you can see this with Aliemi, like where he peaked at 75k, but now he's down to sub 60k. The reason this has occurred is because, um, what's good, the um, NA, so America and whatever, has received their FIFA points here. And because they got their FIFA points here, they then go and open the play packs and the players drop. So across the board, the players should be down from what they were in the last few hours. Again, was 28k down to 25k. But if we go and look, head back to these graphs, we can see they do start rising as of about 7 in the morning. There we go, rising as about 7, 8 in the morning again peaking at 12. So if you want to play the short game, you're going to go and sell your players probably around about 12 today, buy them back around about uh, either content time um, through to early morning and uh, just keep on repeating that process over and over again. So that is the market. We've got a few, well, we've got loads of other stuff to talk about. Um, some of the stuff we're going to talk about is how I've been getting some of my start coins because I've actually been able to pack myself about 150, maybe even 200Ks worth of stuff from packs. Now, see, I got about 80, 90K from my 4.6K FIFA points, but how I've been able to get loads and loads of packs, it's actually in moments. So, in moments, I've actually completed about 70 odd stars. I've got 43 stars completed there, another 14 there, another 12 there, another 16 there. And the reason I've done all of these is because, again, they might have gone because uh, I've redeemed them, but there was a pack where all you need is one star and you get a tradable 7.5K pack. And then, I've already opened them. But um, you can also get two tradable 50k packs for 70, 60 stars. In one of my tradable 50k packs, I got Lucy Bronze, who is 2k. In my other tradable 50k pack, I got Walker, who is 60k. So in some insane, insane coins there. And all you got to do is play moments for about an hour or two to get two tradable 50k packs. And trust me, it is heavily worth it. Don't get me wrong, I spent about 20 minutes trying to score a volley from a corner. And never again do I want to have to do that. 
But um, but yeah, that's one of the ways we've been making coins is um, is uh, what's it called doing the moments. I'll also in a second talk a little bit about the investments I've been going for. But we might as well show you guys the uh, the team that we are donning because of course yesterday we did go and get ourselves the um, we went and got ourselves a hero pack. And I was joking because I said, well, you know, in previous years I've got Ginola as my first icon, uh, first hero from like, the hero SBCs. I've had Yaya Tori as my first hero. I said, ah, oh, they'll just go and give me someone really good. And I went and got myself Eden Hazard. <laughs> I went and got myself Eden Hazard. Now, of course, it's not on the market because uh, it's only like the middle versions of heroes on the market. But yeah, we got Eden Hazard as our hero. And I'll be honest with you, as in, it's only in moments, but yeah, he is um, by far the best in this team. I also managed to go and pack myself Gokka as untradeable in some um, in some sort of SBC. Uh, and other than that, it's just filled with a bunch of uh, a bunch of lone players because you can use these lone players in the moment. But yeah, Hazard an absolutely insane card. Very very excited to be able to use him. God knows, probably until December. I don't know how long he'll stick in my team, but yeah, very very exciting. Actually, he gets upgraded in December. I do forget that. So yeah, that's probably my winger for about January or February. So I might as well get myself um, quite quite familiar with him. But yeah, so that's the team we've got at the moment. Let's go talk a little bit about the investments I went and picked up last night. Because we talked about the market crashing. We made ourselves some investments. So let's head over to the transfer list. As you can see, we've been very, very busy. Now, the first investment I made was Isaac. Uh, now, I didn't really plan on selling these players till midday. But you know what I said? I said, maybe these cards will bang overnight. And if they bang overnight, then I can get some good coins. So what I did was I bought Isaac. Um, again, we said we got him at the cheap point. Got him around about 33, 34k. And I thought, you know what, I just listened for double what I bought him for. I list him up for 65k. Now, we never actually went to 65k. But because Isaac is such a popular player, um, what actually happened was he just sold on a lazy buyer. And he sold on a lazy buyer 24k more than he's selling for. Now, sometimes normally there's a joke saying, oh, these are just my viewers buying these cards. But I literally would have, you know, this would have been like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning when I wasn't streaming whatsoever. So what it would have been is he's just such a popular player that someone just would have said, screw it, 65k looks cheap enough, I'll go and buy it. Or maybe they compare price on the player and then they went and bought it. So um, yeah, one of my investments, we've already literally flipped for double coins just for selling on lazy buyers. Um, we then moved for a few of these. These are just some advanced SBC players. I'll talk a little bit about these in a bit. Uh, and my other investments were, I think I've got to scroll to the back now. We picked ourselves up three Berailers at uh, 26 and 28k and pick myself up two in Cuckoos for 18k. So we did get the real low point, and again, it's just because it was the same as last year, you know, I recommended my chat to go and play as when they're in. There you go, you can see 18k in theory, I guess we could have got a little bit cheaper, but it wasn't too bad. And Cuckoo's gone from 18k a piece up to about 25. A railer again, we went and picked ourselves up for 28k. He's gone from 28k, and now he's going up to 38k. And then I've also got a few hidden investments. Now, what do I mean by hidden investments? Now, I talked about it in yesterday's video that you can go and buy an icon for 80k, discard it for 65k, and then just bring it back on quick sale recovery. So I went and did that five times. So right here is my quick sale recovery. So again, I bought Larson for around about 80k, Moore for about 80k, Veron for about 80k, Shira for about 80k, and another Veron. And I discarded every single one of them. Well, the reason you can discard them, the reason you do this is because you can then basically have them as an investment but then you get all your coins back apart from 15k. So it only cost me basically 15k per player to hold on to them. So what, what I did, again, I bought them at 80, I discarded them at 65, so I've got 65k again to go and reinvest. And again, I'm only losing out on 15k. So for the price of 15k, I could again buy Larson at 80, and now I can go and sell Larson in a few days time. And again, if you follow his last year's trend, where again, he was the same sort of thing down here at 90, so I've got a good price on Larson. And I can go and send it for 150. For the 15k for holding on to him for a few days, I can go and make myself around about se about 65, 70k profit after sacks. And I can do the same here with Bobby Moore. Pick Bobby Moore up for about 85k, discard him for 65. So for the price of 25k, and if Bobby Moore goes up to 167, then I go and make myself a nice little 75k there. And then on the Shearer, again, pick Shearer up for about 85. Hopefully goes up to 160. That means we're going to make ourselves another 70k. And it's just really, really easy money. It's kind of like a way of having an investment, but you know, they're not just sitting there on your transfer list. You've kind of got the most for them. So I've done that five times. I'll bring them back on quick sale recovery in five times. I basically aim to make myself around about 400k. And all it's cost me is 80k that I haven't been able to use because, you know, I guess that, that money's been discarded basically, or the difference has been discarded. So um, yeah, really, uh, really looking forward to see how this play goes. 
So back over to the ultimate scene if I can find my uh, controller. A few other investments that I've been trading with have just been players used for advanced SBCs. A lot of the non-rares used for advanced SBCs are going up and down, up and down, up and down a lot. So I've been trading with a lot of those players, but I'm actually going to move off of trading with advanced SBC players and move on to trading with players with Shadow. So a lot of these players I've just been picking up on bids, picking them up on snipes. I had a big old list on my guide, but I say we are going to probably move on to Shadow trading now. So um. I probably will move away from these, but yeah, we've again we picked all these players up for about half the price, and all we do is we just keep on listing them for double what we born for. I picked these Lorients up for like 500 coins if I can go and find uh, another one on my tramps list. There you go. Picked up Lorient literally for 600 coins, was able to sell him there for 2k. So the method we are moving on to right now is shadow trading. Like I said earlier in the video, um, I do provide all the data for this, so it's still very early on, but I was only doing it for like five, ten minutes just to see how, see how active the market was. But I've already been able to flip players on. I picked up Bruno Gilhamej earlier for 2.9k, flipped him up 5.2. Lawrence I went and picked up for 3k, flipped her at 5.2. Uh, and so far they're the only players because I haven't actually bought too many more cards with Shadow. I don't know if I've got anything else on my Tramps list that I've been flipping with Shadow. If not, I've been able to literally sell everything I've bought. Have I been able to sell all? Oh, there's a Gavardio who I picked up at uh, 7.5. I've been trying to flip there for uh, 12. So the profit margins on these cards are really, really nice. Um, and how do you do this method? Well, at the moment, oh, there you go, two more cards as well. We plan on making some good money. So how do we do this method? Basically, what we're looking to do is we're looking to just go and buy gold rares with Shadow for only 1k more than they are without a Shadow. Because Shadow is a 3k chem style, or 2.5 to 3k chem style, if I can go and buy a player with a Shadow for only 1k more, in theory, there should be some profit. And this early on, there's not that many gold cards out there with Shadow, which means the price differences are really good. On top of that, people are lazy, so they will generally pay like 4k more for someone to have a Shadow on them rather than buy a Shadow, buy a player and apply it themselves. So what I do with this method is I basically throw in the filter Gold Rare, Shadow, 20k by now, maximum bid I just throw to anything. If you're on the web app, I don't think you can put the maximum bid as anything, so just leave the maximum bid. I then go and search this, and what I'm looking for is I'm looking for gold cards either on a bid or a buy now who are only 1k more with a Shadow than they are without a Shadow. So, for example, we've got Sabitzer. So we've got Sabitzer there, I'm using foot.gg at the moment, probably will transition onto Footbin. So Bitzer at the moment is going for 1.9k. So, behind the webcam. So what I'll do is I'll go and bid 2.9k because I should then be able to go and sell him, well, let's go and bid on that for 2.9k. Because if we go and win this a bit, sir, I'd imagine again, it's still very, very early in the game and I doubt there's many on the market for 2.9k. So, sorry, doubt there's very few. Yeah, like the next sheep's on the market is uh, 6k. And do you know what? I'm gonna go and bid 2.9k on this one. So what I would do is I'd go and win it at 2.9k and then probably go and list them for about 5.2k. I normally add about two point, well, I normally add about 2k more than what I bought the card for if there's no others on the market. If not, I'd just go and sell it for the cheapest on the market. And as I say, you know, I sold earlier the Lawrence, I sold earlier the Bruno Gilhamish. There is demand for these players. Um, and the nice thing is, if, if you're trading with some of the more expensive cards, like that Gavardial, these cards are, Gavardial is rising every day. And because Gavardial is rising every day, not, am I, not only am I getting him as a trading deal, but in theory, he's also a bit of an investment. So what I will do is I'll go and win this a bit, so right now for 2.9k, and I'll go and list him for 5.2k. And I'll just keep relisting him until someone will buy him. And because he is a semi-meta card, people will go and buy him. I don't recommend buying uh, wing, well, basically attackers. You basically want to go and get yourself defenders or midfielders. So again, what you want to do is you want to go gold rare shadow. You want to scroll along here, look for bids. All we can do is scroll to the fifth night minute and look for buy nows. Uh, so I've been doing it in the morning, and again, the morning market's normally quite dead, and this has already been a good market to go and do this on. A lot of the players you might be buying might be near SBC fodder players. So let's go have a look at Vitinia. Vitinia actually isn't uh, SBC fodder, but might be a nice little example. Vitinia is 4.3k, so we'd only pay 5.3k. Be very aware of price ranges. Tobedo, for example, only has like a 5.2k price range, so wouldn't be the best. But some nice cards there with open bids I could go and pick up. Again, Kimpembe with a nice open bid. Bruno Fernandes could be interesting. A little bit of an expensive card, and again, maybe a bit more of an offensive card. 16k, so no, we wouldn't want to go and pick that up. Grimaldo, I don't think that'd be a buy. And what you do is you basically just keep on spamming this filter. Sadly, every time you are going to have to go and put Shadow on, because year after year after year, it's uh, still a glitch that removes the chem style every time you search. And again, all you need to do is search this in, scroll to 5th Night Minute, and look if there are any new cards to go and bid or buy now. Weirdly enough, there's just another of bits that's just been listed. There you go, Vitini. We literally checked Vitini a second ago. We knew that he was 5k about a shadow, so we're going to pick him up there. 5k with a shadow, because again, a shadow is literally a 2k chem, case, uh, 2K chem style. There you go. So let's go and type Vitini in. And let's have a look. V I T Vitini. Picks him up for 5k. Again, should literally be what he's going for on the market. Cheaps on the market with a shadow. 
is we've got one for 6.4k so i could go and list him up for 6.3k turn over 1k profit or maybe if i want to go and try and get a bit more i can say well eventually that car will either not be on the market because it'll expire or it'll just get bought uh, and then i can go and sell mine for like the second cheapest for a bit more profit but there we go get a vitinia listed up should go and sell on nicely um and that is the trading method i plan on doing again every single player that i either sell all I do to gather data, if I'm not selling cards, then what I do is I go and add them to the watch list. So for example, like Cal Logru, and every single time a card sells, what I then go and do is I go and add them here. So we've just gone and seen Cal Logru sell, so we go to C-A-L-H-A-N-O, could have picked an easier name, and center CDM. Then what I do is I knock off around about 50, well, I normally knock, give you about 1K profit. So I would say you're gonna go and pick them up for about 4.9K, uh, and then you're gonna go and sell them for 6K. I guess 4.7 if one to be exact. And what I do is I go and add all these players. Um, and then what you have is when you're shadow trading, you get into that fifth night minute and you're not quite sure what a deal is. Well, then what you can do, again, take over a pinch of salt. Obviously, prices are going up and down, up and down, you know, a bit. They're still finding their, their position. So don't go and panic sell if, you know, they haven't sold on for the first hour. But also maybe check foot.gg, see what they're going for. But again, these players shouldn't really be crashing. They should, they should be good, if anything, progressive. Uh, and as I say, we'll go and add all this data. I mean, there we go. I could have used that data earlier that Vitinia sells at 6.5k of a, uh, with a shadow. So, um, yeah, I'll go and put all this data on the guide to help you guys with this method. So that is the way I recommend trading. It's going to be shadow trading. If you are a very high-budget icon trading, but I need about 24 hours to get my head around the current market for icon and hero trading. So that is how we plan of trading. Um, now what we're going to move on to is just talk a little bit about the leaks because there has been... Well, one or two things, or at least one or two bits of news. The first thing is that the Alibri I talked about in the previous video is looking likely to be an objective, which is insane. Because obviously they show SBCs in the top corner. I'm not seeing any Alibri there, so they're seeing the objectives, which makes you think they're going to release Alibri as a bit of a meh objective. But it's very cool that it's an objective. Also, new stuff, there's this card design. It's the exact same card design as a Team of the Week, but it's a season card. So, that's pretty cool. Um, cosmetic Evos can care less about and again, objectives, we know that that's going to be um, Robertson's, Robert Sanchez. That's probably going to be Alaba. And I can imagine that will probably be some either La Liga player or La Liga F player, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then to go and wrap it up, apparently there is a Haaland SBC. Now, Haaland did win POTM last month, but EA did say he's not going to go and get a SBC for that. So I'm not quite sure what this is. But um, yeah, very interesting he comes as an SBC because obviously Fodder would do very, very well, but it's kind of subjective. But every day... So people would say, oh, well, I'll go and buy fodder if Haaland's coming out. The problem is he would be very expensive. And I mean, they don't like Haaland wouldn't rise fodder as much as 120k KDB would, right? Because there's nowhere near as many, even though he might be six times as much using six times as much fodder. In theory, he isn't six times demanded, which means in total, there's less fodder being used. Um, and also, if you go and buy fodder, fodder is going to drop every 24 hours it isn't needed because there's just a consistent increase in supply without there being any increase in demand. So I wouldn't be the biggest fan of going and buying fodder because I think, you know, your metas are highly likely to kind of double in price between now and the ultimate edition. Whereas your fodder, I wouldn't say is guaranteed to double. Obviously, you can split your investment, you know, keep coins liquid. Maybe it comes out, then you buy, uh, you, you know, do a quick little analyze on is it going to be demanded? Is it looking good value for money? Um, and then go and um, go and make your judgment on what sort of fodder you want to go and buy. Probably going to be high rated, obviously. But in terms of like 88s through to maybe 90s. But we'll have to see what it is. Maybe it's going to be a flashback SPC. That'd be very nice. But um, but yeah, so Macy's gatekeeping the information since about 3 o'clock in the morning. But that is going to go and wrap it up. As I will be live streaming all the way through to half six. Any questions you guys do have, do make sure to go and join. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. And I shall see you guys tomorrow with a brand new video.